Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I think so. I'm the last one in the presentation. And as we say, the best one is always left for the last. <laughs> so, the, uh, so in next uh, half an hour or 20 minutes, we are going to tell about how on robot is helping and shaping the future of collaborative application. So basically, uh, good afternoon to everyone and thanks Gillian for this opportunity. I am Vikram Kumar. I'm the general manager for OnRobot and uh, I've been working in OnRobot for the last three years and uh, based out of Odense, Denmark. So uh, something brief about OnRobot. OnRobot is a Danish company with its headquarter in Denmark in Odense. And uh, it was formed by merger of five companies which happened in 2018. That was Danish company, which was making two finger gripper on robot. We had OptuForce making in Hungary force stock sensor. We have Perception Robotics in, uh, in Los Angeles making Gecko Gripper, which is used in International Space Station. And then we had Purple Robotics making vacuum gripper with inbuilt vacuum pump in the gripper. And last one was Blue Workforce, which are making cameras or eye. So in 2018, all these five companies were merged together and we became on robot. So that's how we started the journey from 2018. We are close to 200 people right now. Our head office is in Odense, Denmark, and we have our R&D in Denmark, in America, as well as in Budapest. All our production happens in Denmark and in Budapest. And very proud to sh uh, share that our delivery is still one day. We have no shortage of chips, nothing. So in last three years, still our delivery is one day. So if anybody wants to challenge, they can just place the order and you will get it next day. And since Ireland is a part of European Union, so we don't have a problem like customs, what we have in UK. We promised we will have 15 to 20 products in 2022. And we did that even during the COVID time. And we have our sales offices, our own sales office across eight to 10 locations in the world. So I think so. Everybody knows collaborative robots or application are very safe, simple, easy programming, fast implementation, requires very less knowledge. It, the owner of this company was the same guy who invented collaborative robot in 2005. He was the, he was the CEO of Universal Robot. And then he sold this company in 2015 to Teradyne. And then he started on robot because he saw that there is not a single company offering all the solutions in one system, zero complexity with 14 different robot brands, because we have camera, we have sander, we have screwdriver, we have uh, vacuum gripper, we have four stock sensor, we have uh, pick and place. So nobody in the world has everything on its own. So our vision is to provide all kinds of uh, solutions for all different applications for all different robots. But all our products work with 14 different robot brands. So uh, now something uh, where I think so, uh, all these information are available in the public domain, but uh, though uh, robotics have been there in the world for 60 years, but automation is only 9% of the entire manufacturing operation. There are 10 million factories and 2.5 million factories in Europe alone, but only 9% of the factories are automated. And this got really a big kick up kick when COVID came in because earlier, most of the automation companies have been focusing only on electronics and automotive industry. But after COVID, they also started to focus on healthcare, food and beverage, uh, warehousing, uh, vertical farming. So a lot of new applications have come after COVID. Otherwise, generally this industry was mostly focused on, uh, I will say automotive and electronics, but there is huge market for everyone to survive. And with all the skilled people, difficult to find, old age uh, going on, uh, as well as uh, new generation, very happy on TikTok, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram. Nobody wants to do this kind of dull, dangerous, dirty, and uh, risky jobs, repetitive jobs. So uh, I think so. for any manufacturing industry to stay, they need to become competitive by doing this. This is just the IFR figures, uh, and uh, IFR figures is International Federation of Robotic Figures, which was out for 2021 just 10 days ago. And we have seen a massive surge in the, in the increase of the robot from 2020 to 2021, which was a COVID year. The robot, entire robot sale jumped by 
from 391 to 517 and collaborative robot also saw a 50 percent growth which was against the prediction where people thought in COVID it will go down the most important this is where uh, we have a big challenge in europe and we have also in ireland i have to say ireland is a beautiful country i've been going there for last uh, 12 months very innovative industry but ireland is very poor when it comes to automation there is not a, even a page for, in IFR for Ireland. It is clubbed together with Malta, Greece, and uh, uh, Israel with, uh, with uh, what do you say, with, uh, uh, with Southern Ireland or Republic of Ireland. The number of the robots sold in Ireland is only across 200, including collaborative or 250, where your GDP is 40% industry dominated. This is the highest in the Western Europe, Northern Europe, and South, Southern Europe after 40% industry GDP. Germany is only the country which has 30% GDP coming from the industry segment. So if the industry in Ireland needs to be competitive, they need to go for automation. And this is the slide which shows how everything is made in Asia. The entire robot sold from 2000 level till 2022, Asia buys more than 75% of the entire world robots. They jumped from 277 to 381 last year, whereas the growth in Europe was from 68 to 84 and 39 to 50 in America. And in that, China buys entire half of the world robots. And this is sometimes difficult to understand because a lot of people say we have cheap, uh, cheap labor, we have, um, we have abundant supply of labor, but China being 1.6 billion people and cheap labor, still they buy the most robots of the world. So either they are clever or they are stupid. But we think, I think we all know that where is in the manufacturing, we are seeing what is made in. So this is just the China figure in last 11 years. So if the industry needs to be competitive, needs to beat the supply chain issues in the world, we have to auto automate. Ireland has to do that. Otherwise, it is it is difficult for the manufacturing industries to survive if they will not automate. So looking at the annual installation, it is like our income gap, rich getting richer and poor become poor. So you can see China buying 268,000 robots as compared to Japan, Korea, Germany, and then 3,000 robots with Poland. That is massive number of, uh, what do you say, robots as compared to 512. So in Europe, if we need to have the competitive edge in manufacturing, again, I will say we need to automate. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for the manufacturing segment to compete with Asia. The top five countries or the China, Japan, U uh, USA, Korea, Germany constitute close to 88% of the world robots sold in the entire year. So. And there are 200 countries in the world. So top 15, you can see Poland with 3,000. There is a huge gap. And but it's not a problem. It shows that we have a huge potential, what we can do. Some of the trends, what we are seeing, robots are becoming more uh, intelligent. They are having cameras, visions, and sensors. They're also working in smart factories, where you have integration of robot and automated guided vehicles. Robots helps flexible automation, which is the biggest challenge in Europe, because we have low volume and high mix, not high volume and low mix as compared to Asia and America. We also have a problem that we have one shift factories which are running 80% of our factories in Europe are running one shift, 15% is two shift and 5% is three shift. That also make deployment of automation difficult because your return on investment is, is taking time. And that's what I always say, let the machine automation do your factory job, hire the people for R&D, for sales, let manufacturing being handled by robots we don't need people there and it is also difficult to find and let's concentrate on making the best we have good infrastructure in europe in ireland let's find people to sell our product and have high volume instead of low volume what we are having but with automation you can help flexible automation that is the key robots are entering into new markets which i explained food and beverage healthcare everything robot reduces your uh, uh, less carbon footprint because you have fewer rejections and the and most of them are based on green technology. And lastly, with all that Ukraine war and supply chain affected deliveries 10 to 12 months, 
because I think so everybody will agree COVID is not the first thing and the last thing in the world and the world will be different from 2020 what it has been. And if we want to secure the supply chain, again, automation is the only way. For the first time in 2020, people were afraid of people. If you were sneezing, people thought to shoot you up. And this will, this COVID is not the first and the last thing. So if we want to secure the supply chain, we want to continue our production without any problem, then we all know robots have is the only way where we can have social distancing in production and everything. So what our robot does, we provide solution for every industry. The biggest thing we want to announce here is that sooner we will be launching something called as super app, which will again change and disrupt the whole robot, uh, robotics world. So we are coming with a deploy in December, 2022, which is an automated application programming, which will further break the barrier in automation because it will enable the customer end user to do more flexible automation without the help of anyone because this program will do all the path logic path routing your programming your signal exchange automatically you just need to give the input and you don't have to program or need application knowledge it will do everything online on site so this will be coming in december 2022 so basically, you will take one hour to initialize. You will do cell setup in 3D in 1.5 hour. And in one hour, you will do the application. This generally takes six to 10 days right now. Google is also working on the same concept. So they will also come with this in next year. But we will be launching Deploy 1.0 in December 22, covering four application. Uh, so something to watch out. And uh, it will empower the customer again to do automation without any 60% of your standard automation can be done by this program. And then 40% customization will still need uh, specialized programmers and specialized application people. So as I mentioned, we have launched 20, 15 products in 2020, 21, and 22, even having pandemic and supply chain issues. But if you are committed and you have the conviction, you can do it. So we launched single pad gecko, three finger gripper, soft gripper, camera, screwdriver, sander, 2FG7, VGP20, VG10, all this 2FG uh, P gripper and palletizing lift and software webletics in this three years, two and a half years, and we will be coming with deploy also. We have a lot of safety solution in our products. We have, uh, uh, these are all PLD CAT3 certified. So if you put any finger in our gripper, it will stop. We have a design of our grippers are having smooth uh, round surfaces, no sharp edges. It follows the ISO TS 15066 uh, 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 um, regulation. In case of magnetic gripper, if there is a power loss, the magnetic gripper is electro permanent magnet, so it will be holding it. In case of our lift, it ensures if anything breakdowns, then it goes down uh, uh, smoothly. It doesn't uh, have any harmful impact on the people working around. Screwdriver is having a safety feature. If you put your hand under the screwdriver and if it experiences deductive force above 40 Newton, then it will retract immediately. So there are some, these are some safety features which ensures that the application is collaborative and it and human can work safely together with robots. What we provide is different kinds of solution for different applications. So these, these are pick and place application where you can use all these kinds of grippers. The biggest challenge in this industry is that many of them don't like to share these videos on online platform because they are afraid people can copy it. The first one is, uh, is in the Scotland where they are using a universal gripper for lifting for the kitchen cabinet. The second one is, uh, uh, this one is used in, uh, in, the, in the pharmaceutical industry in Germany where they are using this uh, glucose uh, uh, sachet which is used when you get ill. And they are using our gripper 2 FG7 because it has clean room 5 certified. The third one is Danish cookies, which you see in the airport. The fourth one is from Randox, Ireland, where they were using 60 universal robot with 60 RG2 gripper for the COVID sample uh, reading of the barcode. So anything you need, pick and place, we have solution plug and play. Then we launched our palletizer. This is again, dirty, dangerous, dull job, delicate, where you have to lift 20 kilo up and down. So we have this palletizing application with our gripper and seven axis where you can use our software and you can just do plug and play for palletizing application. So here you can see uh, example on the right hand side is uh, in the Germany. And then we have also in the Sweden, uh, sorry, in, 
in Australia where they are using this for carrying the milk packs. Machine tending application, this is very much anyone who is doing machining, it is, it is very important that you keep your machines working three shift because if they are working only one shift, then they are again losing the productivity and the efficiency. And with by installing robot, you can ensure that from these same machines, you can have 300% output or 200% output by just making an investment of 50 to 100,000 euro. They know they, they don't need any salary hike. They don't need any breaks. They are not having any emotions. They ensure that your quality and your efficiency is same every hour, every second, every day. So this is something and we had in Poland where the customer got a big order and they were thinking of buying more CNC machine. And we told them if you can install a robot, then that from the same machine, you can have 300 output in three shift instead of make, buying a new CNC machine, hiring people, making a factory with the same machine, installing robot, you can have all the three shifts. If somebody gets time in future to visit Japan, then please go and visit Fanuk factory where there are 7,000 robots making Fanuk robots, Fanuk machine. There is not a single person in Fanuk Japan factory working. There is completely lights on, lights off. They only put the lights on when there are visitors. It is amazing to see 7,000 robots doing the entire job for Fanuk, having not a single uh, labor on the shop floor. It's unbelievable. Second application is in Czech. The third one is in Italy, in your stamping, bending press machine. And the last one was in Russia with our magnetic gripper. Again, I think so people will agree this kind of job was not meant for humans robot or automation is not taking the jobs for human. They are just filling the gap where the market is having with all the skill people or all this old age issue. So don't look at robot that they are competing. No, they are providing uh, the skill what was missing in the manufacturing industry. We have more application in Finland, again in Netherlands, Netherlands, and then the last one is for the for the UK industry where two brothers are making the paddles for the bicycles. So we have all the solutions for everywhere. Coming on to sanding, this is also a dirty job. It makes a huge lot of sign, sound and then you have small pieces going into the environment which nobody wants to inhale. So the first example is Lamborghini. If somebody bought a Lamborghini in 2021, then it was not made by hand because they could not find any people to do the sanding of the side panels. So it was done by universal robot and on robot sander. So in 2021, Lamborghini was not made by hand completely. Then we have the Seat um, uh, in Barcelona. Then we have wood industry in uh, UK. We have also these uh, panels which are made in Germany for automotive industry. And recently we also saw a application where people are polishing their side walls after the painting. And then the, the last one is a gas tank polishing in, in, uh, in Portugal. So again, as I mentioned, so many new applications which the world has never seen that robots or automation can do that. Polishing your walls after painting. Never ever I have thought about this in three years. Then we have screw driving. So again, you can have high precision with the technology. So we have the one in uh, UK. The second one is also in UK. The third was in Czech. And the fourth one is in Hungary in Nescafe machine where they are using our self, uh, our screwdriver with the, with the robot for Nescafe exposure machine which ensures that you have in 18 seconds, you have this cycle time. And that is what you can do with the robots. You can ensure higher productivity, higher efficiency and constant quality at the same time. So, and the last one I think so is uh, quality and testing. This is in, uh, uh, in Chris Hansen where there was a guy sitting and just shaking the bottles eight and eight hours. And then they were having a problem in their arm because they, if you do this for eight hours, three months, you will have a problem in the, in the in your joints again it's not meant for human to do that job so now there is six robot doing this job and the people were changed to something where they could contribute more productive so they didn't lo lose their job second one is uh, measuring the life cycles of the indicator with our four stock sensor in skoda third one is a covid testing machine where they have placed this in all latvia where the robot doesn't go into your mouth they have the kit 24 hours if you have a pain in the throat you just get a pin, go to any mall, go to any uh, petrol station or, uh, or airport. You put the pin, you get the kit, you do the swapping and put it back. So they had 40 of these 
uh, I will say this kiosk all across Latvia doing COVID tests 24 by seven. The fourth one is uh, picking up the lens with our RG2FT in Scott industry in Germany. These are very delicate lens. So you need a four stock sensor which can handle these very carefully. Fifth one is in L'Oreal where they are using our uh, gripper to do the permutation and combination for hair products, what they are launching. And as I mentioned, most of these companies don't like these videos to be published online. So that is the biggest challenge we have because they all want to keep their productive secret manufacturing themselves. So this is the biggest challenge. Also what we see in automation. The last one is in the, in the hospital in Denmark where they can't find nurses. So they have got these robots where they can do the testing in the machines with 2FG7, which is clean room five certified and helps you again to bridge the gap with the labor you are missing. So these are some of the application. And once you do automation, you also need to find the result, how your efficiency has gone up. Because if you study in a college or a school, you also need to give a test to ensure what is the result. So we have also our webletics, which give you an overall equipment effectiveness. So you can ensure that you have planned downtime. What is your loss? How is your runtime? How is your efficiency? Because it is very important if somebody has invested 100,000 or 200,000 euro, they also need to know how is the output coming. Did automation help? Did uh, they get the result what was promised? So this is the tool which is ensuring to give you all the downtime, all the loss, all the performance, and you can further improvise your productivity. So with all this, we have 800 configuration, which you can use with different robot brands. Our value proposition is one-stop shop solution, plug and play, one system, zero complexity. It's all electric. You don't need any compressor or external supply. If people want to know more about our company, please check our learnonrobot.com or onrobot.com where you have a lot of information free of cost. You don't need to provide any of the information. On Learn, you just need to log in with your email ID and on onrobot.com, you get all the step files, operation manual without giving any details. We have a Danish philosophy where we want to empower the customer without any bureaucracy, give the power to the customer so they can, they can solve it themselves 24 by seven. This is always a small funny slide. Whenever you talk about automation, people are always like, seriously? And then managers, when they notice that automation has improved their overall productivity, that is the one. Oh my God. So that's all. I will say thank you for the time and thank you again, uh, Gillian. Uh, I will again request all of the manufacturing industry in Ireland. We have a very high GDP contributed by manufacturing industry and the robot density and automation is very low. So please, sir, please, ma'am, please go for automation. That is very important for the economy and the country to survive. Just to give you a small example, Spain had 20% tourism on their GDP. In COVID time, they lost 1.2, they lost 102 billion, 120 billion out of 1 trillion economy because they could not get the tourists. And generally your GDP should not be more than, uh, for the tourist, uh, for the tourism, it should not be more than 8%. If Spain doesn't go back to the tourism revenue in 2022, there will be half a million people who will have no job because out of 120 billion, 30 billion is your salary. And that's why I'm very thankful to Gillian and all the people for giving this opportunity because the more we can educate our customers, manufacturing industry, that automation is key for survival. This is very important that we educate as much as the market so that people can go for automation. So with that, I will say thank you. Thank you to all. I hope I was in the time limit. Yeah, no, that was brilliant, Vikram. Thank you very much. Um, has anyone any questions for Vikram? You can shout out or put them in the chat. But I would definitely, and I know, um, I'm not sure if um, Gary from Invest and I is still on, but we know that definitely, you know, th there are some fantastic companies um, here locally doing great things with automation, but there's so many who could um, really embrace it a bit more. And I suppose that's where our program can help. Um, a bit of a shameless plug but you know that's we are, we're giving six days of free mentoring support for companies who are going do you know I could be doing something but I don't know what I don't know how to start looking at it and we, we can definitely help that but there are lots of other supports too so um it, it, yeah really I agree with you wholeheartedly there um so has anyone biggest, any questions the biggest challenge I was I was told is that uh, uh 
uh, people who want to do automation, the biggest challenge why automation is so small in, our, in Ireland or Northern Ireland is because they don't know about automation. They don't know how to do it, why to do it and whom to contact. Even the yeah. big industries like Johnson & Johnson, there were three major reasons. Why to do it, how to do it and whom to contact. Yeah. And I think so this is the biggest challenge and not in Ireland, it is in whole Europe, in whole world with 9% automation. So really, I say thank, thanks to all of you guys, you are doing this because the more we educate, the more we do, we'll get people on board in this automation journey. Definitely. Um, anyone, any questions for Vikram? And there was one point there, just, and this isn't really a question, it was you, you said about the air supply, You're, you know, you don't need that compressed air or, you know, that... Um, I think that's a really good point too. Because most of the most of the food and beverage industry and the pharma industry doesn't like air or an external compressor because it makes noise, yeah. and then you need to do the air piping. And if it, uh, uh, if uh, there is some defect or anything leakage, then it contaminates the pharmaceutical and food industry. So that's where that's why we always say that we are the Tesla of the industry. We are very different from the traditional. We are electronics, no pneumatic. Because when you have electronics, you get more power with the data, which help you to improvise. Because when it is pneumatic, you can just increase the pressure. But with the electronic grippers, you get all the data, which everybody in the world is after. Everybody wants data, yeah. data, data. Yeah, definitely. 